So let's take a look at the problem solving method known as the five whys, or also causal chains. And let's take a look first of all at how that relates to the uh, problem solving funnel as a, as, a, as a frame, where we begin with a high level problem. It might be something that's vague, it's something that we don't fully understand, but it's the problem coming at us on a day to day, moment to moment basis. What we want to do is break the problem down to understand it, get some data, get some facts, look for patterns. And from there, that means understanding the work. This is a, certainly a characteristic of lean problem solving, which is to deeply go and observe and understand the work. From there, we can identify a point of occurrence, also sometimes called the direct, called the direct cause. Uh, it can also be thought of as a problem in its own right. Now, we can do the fun part, which is to start to ask the five whys. We can put on our investigative hats and ask why, why, why is this occurring? That will lead us to a root cause, regarding which we can attach a countermeasure. So to look at this part of the problem solving process, uh, the five whys or causal chain, let's look at the uh, famous example from Taiichi Ono of Toyota, and the one that he used starting in the 1950s of a machine breaking down. So the problem that he saw as the manager of the machine shop was machines would often break down and his people would often just attach a band-aid. They would only stop it at the, at the first level of cause, meaning that the problems would recur, they would come back. So he trained himself and his people then to always ask the five whys, sometimes three, sometimes eight, the point being to follow the causal chain all the way down to a root cause. So in the, this example, he looked at a machine that had stopped working and identified with the first why that it had blown a fuse in the control box because it was overloaded. The overload caused the fuse to blow. Then he didn't stop there, asked why again, uh, and recognized that insufficient lubrication was getting to the bearing. So the bearing, therefore, was causing the overload on the machine. Not stopping there, he went to the next cause and asking why, found that the pump was not drawing lubricant, so the lubricant then would not be sent to the bearing. Still not stopping there, okay, why again was the pump not drawing lubricant? Because the shaft was worn, causing it to rattle and not function properly. Now, another why there led him to a root cause, which was that there was no strainer that allowed metal chips to enter in and damage the pump. So with the damaged shaft, that would mean that the pump wasn't drawing lubricant so that there wasn't enough lubrication going to the bearing that overloaded the machine and blew a fuse and that stopped the machine from working. So he's got a five Y causal chain going down to the root cause and you can check that with a therefore chain going up uh, as well. So now he knows if I apply a countermeasure here which is to make sure there's a strainer then the problem will be solved so that it doesn't come back. So this is what can be accomplished with a fairly simple way of thinking so that we're not just putting band-aids on symptoms, that we're solving problems at the root cause. Good luck.